Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Mortgage Coach and Win by Noon Friday Mastermind. Uh, we're getting closer to number 300. Todd and I will be celebrating number 300, and Deborah Bird will be joining us as well at Sales Mastery in a yeah. couple of Fridays. So uh, super pumped about that. Uh, I want to do a special shout out to Deborah. She came up with the idea of today's call. She's like, hey, you know what, guys? Today is the last day of the third quarter of the year. And tomorrow is the first quarter of Q4. So, you know, if we were playing a football game, guys, we're, we're entering the fourth quarter, which we all know is a time when games are won and lost. Uh, before we bring on our special guest, I'm going to hand it off to Mr. Bookspan. Say a few words about today's call. You know, I'm just I'm just really fired up. I mean, I think one of my favorite calls of, um, you know, of the past 12 months was was when I had Kai all to myself and we got to really just chat about, you know, kind of his vision, his processes, his coaching. And I think that, you know, as we head into uh, the final quarter of what's going to be one of the most challenging years we've had in the mortgage business in a decade, I think it's just perfect to have him on to uh, get us some motivation, get us launched as we head into Q4. I like that I'm still considered a special guest after all these years, yeah. you know? Okay, well, just a guest. A but guest, not so but... special guest. That's all right, if that's what you want to be. <laughs> Deborah, anything you want to make sure gets covered before we, we kick off the big show with Kai? Well, when I was considering the title full court press, it was more for basketball, not not for football. Even though there's four quarters in football, too. And I'll, I'll let it slide that Kai's wearing that jersey, if you guys can't tell. <laughs> He's representing his Lakers, but I, uh, I wanted to announce officially thanks to, I had written this in technically I had this on QT for second quarter for us to have a Spanish version for social media content. I didn't quite get it done in the second quarter, but we did get it done for third quarter where we have officially launched uh, social media for um, Spanish speaking loan officer. So if that's you, just send us an email, which is marketing at plugandplaysm.com, and we will get you taken care of. Right on, right on, right on. I think that's so, awesome. That is awesome. And, uh, and, and very much needed. And I applaud you. I, I remember what a proud day it was when I announced that Mortgage Coach was in Spanish. And, and it is something I'm extremely proud of that we were one of the first technology companies to do that. And I, it's a massive opportunity, guys, you know, to serve the underserved markets and to make sure that we're serving everybody. So before I bring Kai on, I, I, I read, I'd like to say I do it every single day, but one of my most coveted books is The, the Daily Stoic. Uh, and and I, I do read it a lot. Uh, probably at least three days a week, you know, I, I read something from it. And I, I and I read it this morning and it couldn't have been more on point with what time it is in the market, with what time it is in the quarter, and really to kick off Kai McBride. So I'm just going to read today, September 30th, every day, like in the Daily Stoic, if you don't have it, get it. This is the leather copy. So it's like a hundred bucks worth every penny of it. Um, anyways, so today, September 30th, it, the, the title is You Can't Touch Me. And, and they always read a passage from, um, you know, kind of an ancient passage. This one's from Zeno. And it says, if you lay violent hands on me, you may have my body, but my mind will remain with, and it's still Pero, still Pio, still Pio. Anyways, it's with myself. Um, and then there's always a modern interpretation. Zeno, it, by the way, I'm dyslexic. Like when I got had to read out loud when I was a young kid, it was just like a nightmare. Uh, it's still hard to, for me to do, but uh, anyways, this is important. Anyways, Zeno is not claiming magic powers, but simply that while his body can be victimized, um, philosoph uh, philosophically protects his mind, cultivating under his teacher, Sapero, um, with an inner fortress who grants can never be broken from the outside, only surrendered. So look and then again, next paragraph, look at Reuben Hurricane Carter, the boxer wrongly convicted of homicide who spent nearly 20 years in prison. He would say, I don't acknowledge the existence of prison. It doesn't exist for me. So by the way, little pause right there, one of my all-time favorite quotes that I, I really got my mind around. I actually had it in my kid's room painted, which was two men in a prison cell, one man sees the bars, the other sees the stars. 
like that little comment really reminds me of that. Uh, anyways, um, blah, 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 um, existing. I don't know. That's going on, last paragraph here, guys, and then we'll bring on Kai. That's power that you have too. Hopefully you'll never have to use this power in a situation of violence or grave injustice. However, in the midst of any and every adversity, it is there. No matter what's happening to your body, by the way, when I think of the body, I think of the market. I think of interest rates. I think of things that are outside of our control. No matter what happens outside the world, it flicks on you. Your mind can remain philosophical. It's yours. It's untouchable. And in that way, then so are you. So, so I love that passage. Before we bring Kai on, Deborah, anything you want to say to that? Anything you want to speak to that? No, but I, I kind of zoned out for a minute, honestly, because I was typing in the comments. So Todd, what do you want to add? Well, no, I mean, I, I mean, I love, I love the fact when you talk about, you know, different people see different things and it's, you know, kind of interesting I, you guys have all heard me joke about it. I've watched during the pandemic, I watched 42 seasons of Survivor. I watched over 30 seasons of Amazing Race with my daughter. And so it reminds me of uh, the last Amazing Race was won by um, two buddies that were best friends. And one of them had been wrongly accused of a crime and was in jail for 10 years. And I was just super refreshed by his point of view and his positive attitude. He wasn't pissed off that that he was stuck there. He was like, hey, I'm out now and I've got every day to gain it. And I think that, you know, we all have an opportunity in this market. We can sit here and complain about the things that we can't control, or we can just take action on the things that we can control. So I think anytime you hear something like what you just read, Dave, I mean, that's just so powerful as a reminder to all of us to not be victims and to really have the right headspace each and every day. And, you know, sometimes we wake up and we have that negative attitude, but it's what can you do to switch it up? So, I mean, that's what I love about the daily Stoics, just gives you something different to think about. So I think if you're one of those people and you're thinking, oh, I woke up in a negative space, then I would probably encourage you, what was your morning routine this morning? Did you do something to change your state and get, you know, get going the right direction? And, you know, I think it was just a great way to kick us off, Dave. Yeah, right on. So I'll bring on Kai. Before I do that, I, I do want to push everybody, get the daily Stoic. Even subscribing to it on Instagram, it's a great follow. Uh, another book that I'm rereading right now, um, this is, I read this book, Psycho Cybernetics, um, 31 years ago. And, and I knew I had read this book, but I I'd kind of forgot, I, I knew the big takeaways, but someone had really pushed me to reread it. And, and I, I, start, I started rereading it. And, and I actually, at one point, had tears run down my eyes because it was like finding an old friend. It was a book that literally of one of the most important books in terms of my story. Uh, I, I married. I, I read it, I think, the year before I married my wife, and it really had an impact on me. And I do think it's a book, whether you've read it, reread it, if it's a book you've never read, it's the perfect time to read this book. And I will be talking about it more in the coming um, episodes. So with that said, uh, Kai McBride is someone, gosh, Kai, have I, have I known, I, I know I've known you for over 15 years, but has it been, 20, how many years is it since uh, we first? 2006, business, 2006, business plan in Las Vegas. Yeah. My first presentation ever. I was probably, well, what, but, years we, old. but we met, we met before that. That was, you know, we, we had met before that because you, you know, you were with Bill Hillstad. Yeah. You were with Raheem. Yeah. Guys, Kai is like an OG. And, and my biggest memory of Kai is there was no one that I ever met uh, up until this point that managed their database better and that had better stats. Like he knew his conversion rates. I was actually telling Bill Hillstead the other day when I was talking to him that I was going to have you on today's call. And Bill Hillstead said, there's no one that I ever knew that knew their conversion rates like Kai. He's just like the OG of, of data making your database your number one priority. He, he was a mortgage coach. He used to come on stages and, you know, like Jeremy Forcier does today. And it would be like, Kai, what are you doing and how you were doing it? Now, Kai was also, it was like his first or second year in the business. And he was just throttling all these people. So I met Kai when he was a new guy in the business and a prime example of how to be successful in the market. Uh, today, Kai is coaching some of America's most successful mortgage professionals. He's really built just an incredible coaching platform. 
And so when, when you know, the three of us were saying, hey, we're going to close the quarter strong and in a way that kicks off the new year, like Kyle is our number one draft choice. And fortunately, he took the, the shot and we got Kai McBride on stage. So Kai, I'm going to bring you on stage. Todd, why don't you kind of take the lead? I will jump off screen. And when I have something to say, I'll jump on. But Todd, you take the lead on uh, pulling out the genius of Kai McBride. Let's go. Well, well, awesome. So obviously we came up with a title. It's time for a full court press with Kai McBride. So Kai, how do you want to kick that off? Uh, well, first of all, I am at AIM Fuse today with about, it's pretty impressive. I want to say a couple thousand brokers. And today is the kickoff day at 9 a.m. And I want to tell everybody here that instead of watching the opening remarks, I've chosen to be here to close off Q3 and to start Q4 with you guys. In terms of a full court press, we're talking trap, full trap, full court press on basketball. I am wearing my Black Mamba jersey because that's how I start off quarters. And the most stoic basketball player that I know was Tim Duncan. So Deborah, if you're a Spurs fan, <laughs> that goes back to you. <laughs> and when I lived in Austin originally, it was Lakers and Spurs and we got knocked out in 99 and that's when the Spurs first won. And I watched them do it at the Alamo Dome. So with that being said, let's start off with stats. It's funny you say stats to start out analytics. Actually, gosh, let's, let's even talk bigger than that. Q3. I wanna say July was the most jarring month that we had because we were kind of going into a tailspin and then we hit July and it's like, whoa, I saw production drop dramatically across the board. I do lots of analytics on my clients and a lot of the industry. And then what are we ending uh, September with Q4? I mean, you know, before at the end of Q3, what do we lose? I don't know, 2000 basis points over the last week or something like that. That's what it feels like. I mean, talking about a roller coaster rush, I don't think we can start Q3 and then Q3 more interesting and start Q4. But let's start with some first stats, which I think are also extremely eye-opening. And when I tell you these stats, this is why how we attack marketing, how we attack sales, how we attack the industry is going to completely change. So we were in a high level, uh, high level coaching group. So when I say high level, these are my coaching clients that do between 20 and 40 units a month. And yes, I still have coaching clients that are doing between 20 and 40 units a month. We started, we decided to on the call run MMI stats on everybody. So if you're familiar with MMI, we can look at people's production. And what's really cool about MMI is we can see how much of the production comes from a real estate referral, a, a realtor referral, and we can pin that down. So one of my longtime clients and now my coach through, uh, through August, I want to say he was 180 units year to date. So Todd, I'm going to ask you a question. 180 units year to date. Let's rewind this 10 years or so. How many realtors do you think composed most of that purchase business? What was what was always the thing, right? High quality, lesser volume. How many realtors could, could possibly give you 180 units? I mean, back back in the day, you were hoping that was nine. You were hoping to get 20, you know, 20 per agent, right? Right, right. People said, don't go 20, 30, 40. Like find your good 10, top 10, maybe 15, top 20. Okay, so today I'm going to let you take a guess, Todd. I'll let you take two guesses. 180 closed units, mostly purchased. I say 90, 95% purchase. I mean, are there any refis now, nowadays? How many realtors do you think composed those referrals? Well, first off, I love that you're checking the facts. You're pulling up MMI. So no one can get on there and pretend they're doing units. You were given, they were giving you yep. facts. Um, I got to imagine it's at least double uh, the number of realtors uh, currently. It was 106. Holy smokes. 106 referral partners, realtor partners to create 180. So then we dug a little deeper. We went into some of the other clients. There are about hundred units year to date, 90 units year to date, 80, 80 units year to date. And every single MMI stat showed that 50% or more from realtor partners. So what that also meant was, for example, one of my clients who was 90 units year to date, who is probably about 45 or 50 realtors deep just to get that 80, about 30 of them were Single transactions, single transactions. Now, there was a NAR stat that just came out recently that said, I think it was like through September, that only 8% of realtors had have done four, buy, or four side transactions year to date, which is probably only two buy, buy sides. So only 8% of realtors have done two or more buy sides in the first nine months of the year. And so it's going to change the way we market and sell because no longer can we depend on a good group of realtors to give us a lot of their business because all of the realtors business, it's completely down. 
And so now we're just looking to collect onesie twosies from, from the people that have onesie twosies. I mean, I was looking at his stats and out of 105 realtor referrals, I want to say almost 70 were giving him a single transaction. 70. That's more units than most producers have done year to date, 70. And so we're not looking for big producers anymore. And what that means is it's changed. And here's why it's changed. How do you manage and nurture 100 realtors? And can I ask everybody this question? How many have you even met with 100 realtors? To get 100 referring realtors, or I know he's sort of an anomaly, but I can look at some of my other people that are 100 units here today with 50, 60 referring realtors. To get that many referring realtors, you have to meet with what, 200, 300 to get to that point for, for somebody to finally give you a referral? So I asked you the question logistically, how do, we, how do we meet with that many realtors consistently while you still have to manage your pipeline and, and do everything else? It's really difficult, right? It changes the game. What do we normally preach, Todd, especially when by noon, it's like, you know, make your calls, set your realtor appointments, do your coffees and, and, and go to lunch. But what do we have to do? Go to like almost one realtor appointment a day, maybe five a day, five a week. I mean, it just, it just gets really, really crazy. And, and, I, and so the reason why it changes is that now we have to look on mass. So my analogy is just imagine you have a fishing pole and you're fishing in a pond or you're fishing in a lake and you're used to going to a place and there's a lot of fish. Okay, so normally what happens is, is that when there's not any fish, we always ask ourselves, well, where, where does the fish go? So we go to another place and we find the fish. That's normally the case in normal markets. Where are the fish going? But it's a little different this time. It's almost like we're going to a fishing spot. And there's like 10 fish, but like nine of them are dead. Does that make sense? And so like yeah. one of them, oh, there's only true. one of them, there's only like one live fish. And everywhere we go, no matter what, there's still tons of fish, but there's only one live fish for every nine dead fish. And so the marketing taxes have changed because we have to cast a wider net, which is why we're calling this a full court press. We have to not just, uh, we have to not just go to different places for marketing, but we have to change the techniques because we have to market on mass. We can no longer market with a fishing pole and sell with a fishing pole or a spear. We have to sell with a net. We have to net something really big, bring in 10 fish and say, you know, there's only one of them that are alive. And that's what's happening with getting referral partners nowadays. And it's completely changed in the game. Pandemic 2020 completely changed the game in, in a lot of good ways and a lot of bad ways. And the good ways is that it's it's turned our relationships completely digital. And Dave, I know you're off camera, but I think it was Zuckerberg who made a statement that in today's world, like 95% of our relationships are virtual anyways, whether it's text message or Zoom. And so clients and, and real estate agents, we're used to this Zoom interaction and everything now. And we can take advantage of that to work with people on a more mass basis, on a quicker basis, without having to do all the driving through traffic and the coffees and then and the one on ones. We can go one to many. What was that quote, Dave? That Zuckerberg said. So I, you know, I, it was a quote. I listened to the Zuckerberg interview with Joe Rogan recently, which I I recommend everybody checks out. It was a, it was a fantastic interview. But one of the notes I took for myself was where Zuck was saying that, and I'll kind of put his quote and my quote together. Like my takeaway from it was. Pre-COVID in 2020, when we said the real world, everybody just, that's the physical world. Like that means we're in person. That's the real world. And he goes, here we are post-COVID and in the real world now, it's physical and digital. And we really, it's blurred. We don't know the difference. I mean, myself, I literally can't tell at the end of the day, I'll be talking to my wife at dinner and said, oh, I talked to this person. I talked to that person. And, and and then, you know, she'll kind of ask a question about it. And I go, oh, well, it was just a text conversation. Um, yeah. Oh, you met with such and such. Oh, you know, it was a phone call. Like, like there is a complete blurred vision between digital and physical. And, and to me, it really put an explanation mark around, guys, we need to use video. Video has never been more important, you know, when it comes to building relationships, that, you know, YouTube channels. You know, I, I get a lot of accolades and I'm very well known in the industry, but I can tell you what, if I didn't found the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel, if I did not create the kind of content that we create through this YouTube channel, I'd be known in the industry because I've been on a lot of physical stages, but it, I would not have the influence. I would not have the, the influence. You know, Mortgage Coach wouldn't be what it would be if it was not for our YouTube channel and that digital and physical presence. So back to you, Kai. Yeah. And there was a time, Dave, that if I saw you once a year in an event, it felt like I hadn't seen you forever. But I feel like we interact so much digitally, so much online that when I see you, it's like, oh, hey, what's up, Dave? We kind of pat each other on the back for 15 minutes. We go about our business because I still see you all the time. Right. 
but that's a good thing. So we have to look I at the way. I want to call out one more thing, okay? And I feel like I know you even better than I did in the physical days because of how, God, what's the word for it? Radically authentic you are on, on um, Facebook. Like, I know you. Uh, you're one of the most entertaining people to watch on Facebook. So guys, if you're watching this and you are not following Kai on all social channels, uh, it's you kill it with how you rock on social. So I just wanted to call that out. I'm the only Kai McBride in the world, at least for now. So if you find me on social, I'll add you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, but again, that changes, you know, that changes the way we interact, uh, but that's a positive, right? That's a positive. And I think this market, this is this is going to be the time to take advantage of it. This market reminds me exactly of 2009 when rates were seven and a half percent. And here's the thing. I love that market, actually, because it's the time that you stand out because everybody has deers in the headlights and they're, they're trying to figure out what's what's going on. I think the worst thing that happened, and this is going to sound funny, is that 2009 didn't last as long as it could have. We, we all of a sudden had a short re so seven and a half percent in 2009, we had like this mini refi boom at six and a half percent. And then the market started going the other way and everybody's happy because rates are going down again. But I was just starting to get into my groove. I wanted to get into my groove because I wanted to create separation and then just completely separate myself from the competition. What we have to remember is the lower the rates are and the better rates are, you have less separation from your competition. Does it make sense? Because now you're being judged on rates. The higher the rates are, you, ha you have a chance to have higher separation from your competition. And while rates are high, it's, it's the focus isn't on rates. It's just like, can I just afford something to get a home, right? Like, let's, let's just focus on that. And so we can do what we do best is we can be home advisors, okay? But let's talk about a couple other things that I think changes the game. There was a time, you, you know, Todd, I'm sure, um, over your career, whether it was yourself or working with people, that we would look at financial professionals for referrals, whether those were CPAs, financial planners, attorneys. And what was always the thing about them? We loved working with them because they were financially savvy. They talked just like us. They weren't as high maintenance and they weren't as needy. But what was the downside? Maybe one or two referrals a year. Okay, but now that's actually the same or more than realtor referrals. So if you're looking at your markets, it reopens up that financial planning, the financial professional and turning markets because they're able to give just as many referrals. And we're in a time right now where affordability and qualification is high. I, I think that a lot of people are getting leads, but they're low quality leads. And so, you know, I'm sure a lot of your win by new clients are saying the same thing, Todd. It's like, well, I'm getting a lot of leads and I'm writing a lot of things down, but it's low quality leads. What are high quality leads? High asset, high income. Where do those tend to come from first? financial professionals because you don't have a financial professional unless you tend to have higher assets and higher income right so that opens it up and again it's just the dynamic of of referral sources and 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 you know exactly what i'm talking about todd it was like there was a time that we just were like ah it's okay it's not it's not worth my time well they're a true trusted advisor right i mean i feel like when a cpa or a financial advisor who's whether they're managing you know, 50,000 or, you know, 50 million of a client, they, I think they trust that referral more than or they trust a referral from the realtor. They do. If your CPA tells you to, so generally, if you're of a higher net worth and you ask, and when we say higher net worth, we're not necessarily talking about being a millionaire, but just somebody who has enough net worth that wants a, a good CPA because they have a house, they have, uh, they have some write-offs, they do a little bit of charity. Uh, they tend to go to their financial people first. And so whoever their financial planner or CPA refers, it's a deadlock. And what you love about them is that there's, there's less rate shopping and they'll refer generally the financial professional first, which they should, before they refer the real estate agent. So that also puts you into in control because now you can choose the real estate agent you want to work with, or you can now create a referral for a real estate agent that you want to work with. Okay. So, uh, I learned this from Tim Brahim when I first got into the industry about 20 years ago. So I'll give the script, but I modified it a little bit uh, for today. Uh, if you want to find financial planners, CPAs, divorce attorneys, estate planning attorneys, you don't have to get some list and call people cold. Everybody that you know is in your database. Everybody that you need to know is in your database. It's a six degrees of separation. And for those of you that say, I don't really have a database, that's a lie. Because everybody can pick up their phone right now and the average person has more than a thousand people in their phone book. If you take your database, even if it's a few hundred, you add about a thousand people in your phone book, you add about a thousand plus so people on social media, every single person here has a two to 3000 person database. 
So if you just call the first 100 people and, and ask them a really simple question, hey, I'm looking for a referral for a good, insert the blank, right? Estate planning attorney, CPA, financial planner, uh, divorce attorney. Do you have one? Do you recommend yours? On a scale of one to five stars, how would you rate them? One to five stars. Tim used to say one to 10, but we're in the days of online review. Everything's about five stars from Yelp and everything's five stars. If they say five or four and a half or great and say, thank you so much. Would you mind introducing us via your text or email? Because I would love to talk to them about sending some clients their way. Now you've got a complete cold referral. And if you go through everybody in your database, you should be able to get about 10, 15, 20 good financial planning referrals, okay? And let's break some of those down too. Um, estate planning attorneys, I, I feel like that's a completely untapped un, uh, market because anybody that has a home should have some type of estate plan will or some type of secession plan, right? When, when they pass away. And so every single person needs some type of plan and they would love to get referrals. And that means that everybody that they work with has a property and they would love to give referrals back. Aside from divorce attorneys, which is probably 6%, 60% of the population and CPAs and financial planners and everything else, right? But it's a completely untapped market. And, and, and that's, again, it's, it's game changing right there, okay? So we've got that and it, it, it completely opens itself up. And, and like I said, oh, so, so back to just mortgage coach. I, I think that mortgage coach, there isn't a better tool to sit with a financial planner and really show them like a TCA, here's the cost of ownership over time. And this is what we're going to do with your clients. One of the best scripts you can ever tell a financial planner is you say, you're an asset manager. I'm a debt manager and I manage the biggest debt that your client's ever going to have. And do you know the one thing that stops people from accumulating assets? Debt. So if we work together and we maximize the efficiency of debt so that we can maximize the and minimize the amount of interest and et cetera over time, I think we can get better wealth maximization. And you can completely illustrate that with Mortgage Coach. And today, the convenience of having media, meetings on Zoom is so simple. I don't have to drive through traffic to meet with every single person and, and, and have masterminds and, and, and the illustrations of Mortgage Coach. Mortgage Coach also is like built-in video. Like it's amazing because then you can you can record it and and and, and you can send it out. <laughs> well, I think most people don't remember when I when I was starting off in the loan business. One is on literally on the first day I got in the mortgage business, I bought mortgage coach. My wife was so mad because she's like, you're spending money and you haven't even closed the loan yet. And uh, my two initial areas that I focused on were property managers and investors and then financial advisors. And I used the TCA to differentiate myself all day with those advisors. And, you know, you kind of nailed, they were just such, I don't want to say it was easy, but I think even right now, you have to keep in mind where I got um, kind of soiled from financial advisors is when the market was, you know, in the downturn, I had a financial advisor tell me, I'm just so over my clients complaining. And I challenged him on, I said, you're, they're complaining about what? And he's like, well, about their portfolios going down. And I'm like, well, that's your job as an advisor. And so you've got a great script that Kai just gave you of how to meet with an, an advisor. And when you're talking to that advisor, you get that referral from your database. Remember, you have clients who are frustrated now with the lack of proactivity of their financial advisor. So that is your, you know, that's kind of your hook for them. Hey, I've got lots of high net worth clients who are frustrated with their current advisor. I'd love to sit down with you and learn your philosophies so I can figure out who would be a good fit to refer them over. I think one of the important things too, is that there's a lot of, um, especially when it comes to financial professionals, there's a lot of narratives in the market right now. Okay, we've got the narratives of inflation. We have the narratives of rates. We have the narrative of the housing market. And it's important that every single person, every single loan officer, understands the narrative and also creates a narrative for, your, for yourself. And so Dave, that's where I think your, your passage from the Stoic is important because it doesn't matter what everything, what is happening around you. And by the way, my analogy for that is if anybody's watched the matrix, this is the, by the way, like the loan world to me, isn't real life because in the matrix, you know, once you take the red pill, uh, you're at home and every day you plug into the matrix and you go into the loan world and we're playing this battle, this game against the bosses and everything. And, you know, it starts to get a little hectic, right? As, as everything goes and, and then Neo's always like fighting a hundred bosses, but what does he do? He goes into slow motion and, right, he fights them one at a time. And then when he gets home, he unplugs and that's when you have balance and you spend time with your family, your friends and your loved ones, okay? But it is the matrix. So what are what are the narratives and what are the narratives that that you create? You know, I, yeah. I, could I insert something before we Absolutely. kind of lose some things that you said that I think are super on point for today's market? 
and that are that are critical like right now. I, I'm gonna put three recent mortgage coach interviews, and really there's four that that are critical. Kai called out a great strategy um, with CPAs and financial planners. But but guys, right now there is a window where realtors need you more than ever. Uh, I interviewed Kelly Zitlow yesterday. I'm gonna actually release it into our YouTube channel in just a minute. I'll put a link down below. I'm gonna text my team at the next opening um, because she's so pumped. Uh, she's with Keller Mortgage now and she's like in-house mortgage people have never had a better opportunity to add value and really get the attention of others because we, we're always just kind of selling the same thing that other loan officers are. Like mortgage coach was helpful, but, but she's like, right now, affordability is at an all time issue. Most loan officers don't really know how to show affordability strategies like seller buy down, two one buy down in a way that helps realtors sell homes. Most loan officers don't know how to really get first time home buyers off the fence and into escrow. You know, that, that, that whole, um, what is it? Date the rate, marry the home, divorce the rent. Guys, as a mortgage coach, all of you on this call right now, you can tell stories and teach strategies better than loan officers can. Because you, you know, those are like affordability. You know, why now is such a great time to divorce, um, divorce your rent. Uh, Jeremy Forcier's interview from last Friday. I'm going to put that in here. Check that out. Check Kelly's interview out. And then, and then I did a master class with Jeremy on. Was it Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday of this week. It's in our YouTube channel. He had two loan officers. One had been in the business one year. One had been in the business two years. I can't remember if it was the two-year or the one-year loan officer who had a pipe of 25 pre-approvals. So they're like killing it. And, and the whole master class was around changing the narrative, like, like you know, pivoting the conversation with the borrower. So if you like what Kai is saying, and, and, and if I was your coach, uh, like if you paid me to be your coach, I would literally be telling you hey, like this weekend, if if you could have these seller buy down conversations, these how to create affordability when affordability is a crisis in America. If you were able to do that with a mortgage coach, maybe you don't need to cram over the weekend, just keep doing it. But if you can't do that, watch these videos. I'm gonna put them down below. If you're watching this on YouTube, put them down below. But they're they're just incredibly powerful strategies in today's market. So sorry, Kai. I just didn't want to get too past that financial planner strategy because I just think in this market, it's Q4, basically. Tomorrow is Q4. Um, that's how you're gonna win in the fourth quarter, is is getting out there and telling affordability strategies uh to listing agents, buyers, agents, and home buyers. Oh no, you real quick, a lot of good real things. quick. Someone's someone's asking Kai, where do they find information on your coaching? Yes. So I'm going to put two links. One link is for my website and I might have to do this separately. One link is for my website where you can find general information and you can, you can contact me. And the second link, uh, I probably just repeated it is that I do offer some complimentary coaching sessions, uh, no sales, no pitching, just coaching sessions to sort of test drive. So that's the second link that you can sign up for that. Um, that might fill up pretty quickly. So I'm going to try to open up some sessions if, if that's the case. But Dave, you actually teed up a lot of great topics. And what I love about Mortgage Coach is Mortgage Coach is one of the one of the best tools, especially for getting buyers off the fence. I mean, I think one of the things that people have to understand is, is the uh, relation between home prices and interest rates. And so what we had before was we had interest rates over here that were super, super low. But what did that do? That drove home prices up. Why? Because, well, actually, there's also an inventory crisis. OK, I think the average home construction in the past 10 years was like 20 million homes per year. Now we're down to 5 million homes per year. And this is there's there's also another anomaly is that 10, 15 years ago, the boomers and uh, actually Gen X was the primary buyers. I remember buying my first home in 2000 or 2003. Gen X is one of the smallest generations. We had one of the smallest generations with the most amount of home constructions, which is a lot of what led to that housing bubble. And everybody talks about the housing bubble today, but it's a little bit different because you have a millennial generation now, which is the main buyers. I think millennials have even hit 40. Like we're just getting old, right? So millennials are now 40. They're the main buying generation. They're twice the size, if not three times the size of Generation X with one quarter of the home inventory. 
Okay, so then you have that plus you had these 2%, 3%, 4% interest rates, and it just drove prices, it just drove prices. So now interest rates have gone up to seven, seven and a half percent, six percent. But but what's happening with home prices? They're leveling off a little bit and they're actually depressing. And there's actually a really good Fed uh, article on the Fed and that they're actually working with that because they want to bring home affordability down. So what does that mean? This is actually a really, really good time to buy. Because if a home at one time was 550, 600,000, and what was even worse was 50 people were bidding on it, and this house is going for 700,000, now this home is back at 500,000 at a more afford affordable level because of the interest rates being high. And so now it's the time to take advantage of the lower price of the home. Okay, so what did Dave say? It's marry, it's marry the home, date the rate, because that rate at 7.5%, 7.5%, it's not going to stay forever. And so if we fast forward to, let's say, one year from now, that interest rate goes down to five and a half percent. The cost of that extra interest on a five hundred thousand dollar house, I, you know, I don't know what the math is, but let's just say it's four hundred dollars, right? Four hundred times four hundred times twelve. I mean, that's going to be forty eight hundred bucks. Well, if people wait, here's the thing about people waiting. If you wait for five and a half percent, you know what it's like? You know, on New Year's morning or Christmas morning, when everybody's piling up in front of Walmart for that one television, those 10 televisions, that's what everybody's doing right now. They're waiting. It's if like they're waiting for interest rates to drop before they buy, but it's going to be like Walmart all over again. As soon as it drops the five and a half percent, boom, prices are going to go up. Bidding wars are going to go up. They're going to get the five and a half percent, but they're going to buy that house at six, six fifty, seven hundred. It's going to become a bidding war. So you can use mortgage coach as a cost of waiting analysis, should show the difference between buying a house today and refinancing a year from now, two years from now, and the cost of that versus the cost of waiting and getting the lower interest rate, but buying a house at 50, maybe $200,000 more in the future. And Mortgage Coach is the perfect tool for that. And yeah, you know, we had a, a great quote, a uh, great script that Renee Rodriguez gave earlier this year when the market was just starting to slow. And it was, are you willing to wait to pay more for a home in the future? And I just right. thought it was really brilliant because you're just you're asking in a way that's going to make someone pause and then actually think. Um, and that's really it. I think those of you here who are in the business understand what Kai is saying, that that's truly what's going to happen versus the masses who are thinking that, you know, a five hundred thousand dollar house is going to be two hundred fifty thousand, you know, in 90 days. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, we also have the uh, availability of buy downs, whether it's a permanent buy down or whether it's a temporary two one buy down, but we can provide temporary relief on housing payments. And again, we can use mortgage coach as a tool to illustrate we can get a temporary buy down or a, a permanent buy down and get them the relief of a five and a half percent today at the lower price. And if you look at the you look at the cost of waiting analysis, yes. You have to um, possibly pay, so you have a choice, right? You have a choice of negotiating with the seller to bring the price down, or maybe you can do a, a buy down. So you're going to have to pay at the full listing price. But again, that price is going to be less than what it could accelerate when all the Walmart people are waiting out front and they want to rush that home. This is the time now that when people buy homes, you can actually find the home that you love, have a conversation with the seller, put in some bids, and there's a high chance. It was the most frustrating market, especially in Austin, Texas, a year ago. You're going 10, 15 offers deep, and, and I think a lot of people just end up with like a consolation home that they kind of really didn't want, but they, they didn't get into the market. So that's the narrative. Mortgage Coach is a great Thing to illustrate that narrative. And this is the narrative that a lot of realtors don't even understand. And once you start explaining this economic narrative to real estate agents, now you flip the script and you've turned yourself into the leader of the economy, the housing market and finances. And you'll watch how fast they flip around and start following you, you know, following you with direction. And so we do that. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to start putting together a couple of things. I love mastermind groups. Mastermind groups are the best way to really create value for realtors, to follow up with realtors and to illustrate your knowledge. And today, mastermind groups, I used to get like 10 realtors live in a, you know, live in room and have a couple of, uh, you know, coffees and, and, and maybe some donuts or stuff like that. I'm, I'm joking. I've never done donut, but maybe snacks, but I could do a Zoom realtor mastermind. And it's so great because why have an individual coffee with somebody when I can, when I can invite five or six real, realtors to a, 
a, a realtor mastermind group and I can add more value. It's also a lot easier for me to invite realtors to a mastermind group where I'm going to talk about the housing market, the direction, the direction of the housing market, how to change the narrative so you get your buyers off the fence, how to get people in the properties now. And I'll want a lot of realtors to attend and I'll ask those realtors, by the way, bring another realtor friend. I started when I used to do mastermind groups, I would start with like groups of seven, six, and they would turn into groups of 20. And so let's go back to my first thing about fishing with the net and the fact that we have to have 50% or more referral partners to hit our unit numbers this year. I don't want to meet with one person at a time. I want to meet with 10 people at a time. So if my goal was to have two masterminds a week with realtors, I can meet with effectively 20 realtors in a week, 80 realtors in a month, and that's how you get your numbers. And that's how you attract people and that's how you add value. And so you have Zoom as a tool now. You have Zoom as a tool now to have Mortgage Coach. You can illustrate the market. You can put up MBS charts. You can put up housing data. You can put up Mortgage Coach cost of waiting. You can put two one buy downs, permanent buy downs, and you will completely, you will completely blow your realtors away, showing that financial real estate leadership. And they'll they're going to want to come back. You can have that every two weeks. They're going to want to come back and they're going to want to bring friends. And it's the best way to attract. And 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 so, my yep. Thank you. So finish your thought, and then I want to jump in and just show something real quick. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and just to take that idea to another level, one of my coaches, he's saying not just a, a mastermind group, but he makes sure there's always one premier realtor in that mastermind group that he can invite and interview. Because here's the thing about real estate agents, especially the top ones. Oh, they love having their ego stroked and, and sharing and talking about themselves. Just, just like all of us as originators, we love being interviewed, right? It's like, yeah, sure. Let's talk a little bit more about myself. And so when you have a, 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 a premier realtor attending that mastermind group, you're going to attract a lot more, which is a good balance because you're still going to want those realtors that give you a, a few transactions a year. And then you're going to have a lot of onesies, a lot of onesies, a lot of onesies. Onesies. So, so, so guys, I just want to, for some of you, what Kai is saying, you're like, I know that, I get it. You know, some of you are like, you know, you don't even know what a total cost analysis is. You don't know how to do a seller buy down. This is one of the videos I put in the link. It's 29 minutes. And, and this is what he's talking about. Like, this is how the best loan officers in America are having the date, the rate, marry the house conversation. And, and they're bringing, you, know, you notice in this one, Jeremy in um, column one and column two, he's having no seller credit versus seller credit. And so he's, it's an affordability strategy to help a consumer buy a home. And then in column three, he's he's having the, you know, date the rate, you know, that, hey, buying this house, that's, you're marrying it. It's a fixed cost at whatever you buy it, but your rate could change. You know, we're, we're getting you this rate today and the rate could change. And that's where he's showing a possible future date. Uh, this is one strategy to help get people comfortable with buying now knowing the concept that they're going to be able to refinance that someday. So listen to this. And, and this is valuable to realtors. And in the divorce, just so you guys can visually see where now he's driving the, you know, divorce the rent, he's showing rent in column one. And then he's showing two, column A, column B, same ones. So he did this to help get someone in escrow. I mean, and, and here's the other deal I want to make sure everybody knows, is you don't need to have been in the business a long time to do these strategies. I interviewed a loan officer um, first year in the business, uh, and, and now he did a, a house hacking strategy. I'm looking forward here because it's just so gold. Uh, where did this house hacking strategy? Uh, I'll explain it while I'm looking to visualize it. Oh, here it is. Brand new loan officer, first year in the business, and... And he was able to show a family who said, you know what, I'm going to, well, actually, it wasn't a family. It was a young 20-year-old first home who said, I'm going to wait a year. And he put the numbers together, rent versus some buy-down strategies. And then column three is house hacking, where he said, hey, you could buy this three-bedroom house now, get a seller credit, and then take $600, rent out two of the rooms, and invest that with the financial planner. And look at in five years based off of what you believe you home buyer was. They're out shopping right now. He's putting this into escrow. Guys, this is a first year loan officer that's doing things that a loan officer who's been doing this for decades wouldn't be able to do just by mastering these conversations. So I just wanted to visualize that for everyone, Kai, because I'm not sure. I'm sure some people knew what we were talking about and some didn't. 
well, this is the mortgage coach community, right? So I always have little assumptions that everybody knows what that looks like. But you want to talk about first year in the business. How about three months in the business? Loan officer, I know three months in the business, first two months in the business, which isn't doing what typical loan officers do. They call everybody, they have lunch. What can I do for you? They'll work open houses, they'll work fairs, they'll work top golf, nothing. Changed the narratives, started working through my coaching program, started creating the narrative of seller buy downs, understanding the market, not waiting, okay, the cost of waiting. And now realtors are contacting her for help on what to do and three transactions in one month. And so it doesn't take a first year. It could take three months in the industry if you change the narrative and you have the right tools and you become the leader. You become the alpha. In life, the alpha always wins. The relationship with realtors and, and loan officers is that we're, all the, we're always the betas. You, we're the yes mans, the yes sirs. We become the alphas. We become the leaders and everybody follows the leaders with innovation like this. You just made a point, you know, when Kelly and I were doing this interview that I shared with you all, we were talking about how like in-house lenders have like an unfair competitive advantage now, because if they're an advisor and a mortgage coach, and you just made the point that brand new loan officers have an unfair advantage for two reasons. One, they don't have the same expectations of how easy it was and how much money you can make. So they're, they're, you know, they're fresh and this is just pure upside. Mm -hmm. And then two, they can learn these tools and they can beat seasoned loan officers in this market mm -hmm. if they just learn these tactics and strategies. Uh, one, any new loan officers listening to this, make sure you check out the new um, loan officer uh, playbook that Todd Bookspan and I have in our blog. Uh, it, it has two killer scripts. And I would really push you guys all to be calling, if you're new, call up every renter you know and you're brand new in the business. This could be your second month in the business. And just tell them, hey, I'm new. I need your help. Remember, you're calling friends. Will you let me practice my rent versus own analysis on you? Uh, I just need your help because I need to practice this. I got to get good at it. And, and what are you guys doing? First of all, when you start showing these people things, you're going to get some clients. And you know what else you're going to get? You're going to get good. Uh, so anyways, just a thought. So I got, we got 15 minutes left. So we are now in the fourth quarter of Kyle McBride on uh, the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel. I'm going to jump off screen and let you close strong, brother. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the best pieces of advice I ever got from my mentor, Tim Brahim, was just go out there and bleed all over yourself. I mean, you know, and, and uh, one of my coaches said, just learn to do things afraid. It's fine. The, the term that we coin now, uh, Dave, it's not about old or new, it's becoming the modern loan originator. And I think that's what's important. It doesn't matter whether you're three months, three years or 30 years in the business. It's, we need to break a lot of the old ways. The old ways are good in terms of, here's what I appreciate about old traditions because I am, a, I am an old loan officer too. It doesn't, doesn't look like it because I'm Asian, but I love the old ways of persistency, discipline, um, mindset, right? Hard work, perseverance. But the new ways of modern innovation, modern modern approach, uh, a technology reaching out to people, the game has changed, and we're dealing with a newer generation now. I don't see how, I don't see how just making fifty calls a day and setting up traditional coffee appointments. I can't even get a, a Gen Z or a millennial to, to pick up the phone. Who are we? Who are we calling? We're texting people nowadays. We're communicating DMs on social. This is a social DM game nowadays. I'd say that if you're not following every single realtor referral partner or whoever you want to work with on social media and you're not commenting and creating commenting on their stories and creating relationships there, that's the playground right now. People aren't looking at their phone. I mean, I, I'll, I'll, I'm sending all my calls to voicemail, but I'll check my DMs first, right? And that's what it is. Because the thing is, is too, it's it's more fun and, and there's there's more relevance. And the other thing about it, I, I know this sounds like, well, this is 2022. Every should, everybody should be on social, but not everybody is. The thing about social is that you get to create your own social proof because once people start following you and they see what you're doing with your life, with your business and all the innovation, then they they will, because it's really hard to do a traditional coffee meeting and let's, let's, let's meet and let me tell you about myself. It's like a weird date, right? But in a social environment, they can look you up, they can see what you're posting, they can see what you're doing, and they, they, they can already create a professional financial opinion. Now, I saw in one of the, in the chat, Christy asked, what's your follow-up plan after the meeting? Here's a brilliant thing about mastermind groups. That is the follow-up plan. You just have one every single two weeks. 
And your whole idea is you just funnel everybody to that and you just get together with everybody every two weeks because every two weeks, you're basically gonna have a financial real estate summit where you're gonna talk about what's going on, what are the strategies and how I can help you. It's the endless follow-up plan. So yes, you may meet with people one-on-one -on -one to get to know them, but then you just move into, you know, you move into the endless follow-up plan. And my suggestions for doing things like mastermind groups is I like using Eventbrite, create an Eventbrite account. The first thing that you have to do is just set a date, set a venue, uh, create the agenda. And I remember when I created my first mastermind group, I set the date for like 30 days out or 45 days out. And here's a script that I, I always tell myself, do it before I change my mind. Because you're going to find 27 million different ways to talk yourself out of something. And when I did my first mastermind group, my first public speaking, my first event, my first Zoom meeting, yeah, it was kind of clunky and it was, it, it was fumbly, but you just keep going from there and you just keep going from there. You keep going from there. And, and hey, you, Kai, let me, let me throw something into a lot of you are scared when you heard Kai say, invite a top realtor in your market and interview them. What, what you don't realize is, is that they're all recruiters right now. If someone leads as a top realtor, they've got a team. And if they've got a team, the only thing they need more than a buyer lead from you is actually a real estate agent lead from you. So if you can give them the stage, you can elevate them up and you make them look wonderful then they are going to want to be there to share because really they're recruiters, especially if you look at, you know, the EXP model or the real, if you've got real broker in your area, um, you know, they're, they're a big, they're really happy to do it. But really, I think anyone in any brand who has a, has a team is going to be willing to jump on. And what do you think about that, Kai? Oh, absolutely. We had this conversation over dinner yesterday. We talked about, because we were, I actually had dinner with uh, three originators and a top, top realtor. He said, uh, you know, my originator asked him and said, what's the value in you being on that? He said, it's free marketing. I'm out here looking to build my team. I'm out here looking to pro my, promote myself. And you're telling me you're going to interview me. You're going to record it. You're going to ask me questions. You're going to splice it up and distribute it. And all I got to do is I got to show up. What time, what time is that? Right. You're just, you're, you're, you're an interview. You're a, you're a talk show host. And you can, if you went out and you interviewed your 10 top realtors in your market, and then you had a lot of secondary realtors following up and, and, and you're doing two every month, I mean, you're going to eventually connect with every real estate person in that office. And then, and then all the things that we're talking about in terms of, uh, you know, mortgage financial real estate advice with mortgage coach, you're, you're going to be so far from your competition. It's not even, not even going to be funny. So remember, it's it's us, everybody in this mortgage coach community against the world. Okay, <laughs> against the world. <laughs> now, there's one other thing that I want to talk about, which is really really important because this is what people aren't talking about. Nobody, right, Todd? Nobody was ready for 20 and 21. The refi just hit us like a, like it just slammed in our face. We just woke up, all of a sudden, China's upside down, rates dropped to like you know three percent, and it's just the frenzy. Okay, we were. So somewhat prepared in, in, in 2000, but I think right now everybody should start preparing for whenever that next refi boom is. And I know what people say, they're like, well, people are going to refinance because a lot of people in two, three percents, yes, people still, but look at what inflation is doing with people running up credit, card, credit cards, consumer debt, HELOCs and everything else. There's going to be a consolidation because the fact of the matter is it's still better for somebody to get out of a 3% interest rate with like stacks of 20% credit cards and a debt consolidation and to lower their monthly nut, right? Then, then, you know, into like, let's say a 5% in the future, then, then stay in that. So that's going to happen. So here's, here's the reason why I talk about it. We want to get ready for the next refi boom. So a couple things, number one, again, look at your systems and how fast, and, and this is the time when the market is slow to look at your systems, look at your checklist, look at your entire processes and how efficient and how fluid are you? Because the problem with 2020, 2021 is that it slams people. It slammed people. I think every single person either said, if I had better systems, I would have done more. Or if I had better systems, I actually would have been able to see my family. Hate to say it, but a lot of divorces happened and a lot of family turmoil happened because of 20 and 21 and the fact that you couldn't go anywhere. So you're just staring at your spouse all day. Okay. So now it's the time to do that. But secondary, especially for the newer loan officers there. Well, when the refi boom happens, who am I going to refinance? I don't really know anybody. My database is small. Well, what did I say? Your database is bigger than you think it is. It's like two, 3,000 people. But here's the narrative. If I have this, I have this quote, I'm just going to talk it out loud. With rising interest rates, it's depressed home values and, and its sales. But as the, Fed, as the Fed continues to correct, we're being set up for a prime interest rate drop in the next year or two, whenever that is. 
And when that happens, there is going to be a flood in the housing market again and in the refi market. So <clears throat> with realtors, you want to tell them that because as that flood happens, let me help you manage your database marketing. Let me help you manage that. Now is the time to acquire real estate agents databases. If you can acquire a real estate agent's 200 person database one at a time, you can end up with two, three, four, or 5,000 more people in your database because your realtors want you to help them market to the database and tell this narrative of now is not the time to wait. And when the rates do drop, there's gonna be a flood and they wanna be the first ones, you can help market them and you will also be primed for the next revive boom. You have to prepare, you have to think five steps ahead. So if you wanna think about Q4 and as we're kind of getting to the end, that's how I would sum it up. We, we have to know that we have to fish with nets. We have to change the narrative. We have to be a modern mortgage originator, but we also have to prepare for the future because the future is going to come. Yes, we want to work with people and get them off the fence, but there will be both a buying frenzy and a refi frenzy. So you've also got to take a look, which is what one of my specialties is as a coach anyways. Let's take a look at your systems and efficiency because it's all about scaling. You want to be able to smoothly go from one to five, five to 10, 10 to 15. And it's about leverage, it's leveraging processes, people and technology in order to do that. And that's really the outlook that I see, not just to end the year, but to propel us into 2023. And man, when that election happens in November, that'll also completely change the trend the trajectory of the economy of the nation. And I think that we have to be really, really aware and we have to create that, but also talk about that with our referral partners. You know, and that and that's what I see. And 48 hours ago, Dave called me and said, can you help me close the quarter? Do you have any thoughts? And I said, man, do I got thoughts? I got a lot of thoughts for everybody. <laughs> and this is what it is. Well, I think you just crushed it. I mean, I think that, you know, what, what I love about you, Kai, is you are the number one guy I know for systems and processes and strategy. And, and you also gave the loan officer who watched this um, an idea of why numbers matter, right? You started off giving us statistics. And so I think if you're watching this and you, you're not knowledgeable about the statistics, about your market, about the overall market, the things that Kai started off with, that would be also a great place to start and then build through the narrative. He gave step-by-step -step guide of things that you can do I presented last week on recession proof your business. And, and so really that's what Kai's telling you. He's really telling you, here's what you can do to close out the year strong and gain momentum into 2023. And more importantly, be ready for that next refi boom. And really the time to start is today, right? The best day to plant an elm tree was 20 years ago. The next best day is now. And so I would encourage you guys, the, the number one action I would probably do is the mastermind group idea. Um, because, you know, uh, you did a great job, Kai, of laying out that, you know, you're dealing with the top of the top in the business. And, you know, I love that analogy of the net versus just the, the fishing pole. I think that was awesome. If you're all, if you have a plan for your business and you're a couple of years ahead, these bumps in the road are just bumps in the road. But if you're waking up day by day, trying to figure out what you're going to do, it's, it's going to feel like complete turmoil. This is an inconvenience for the best originators at most. It's an inconvenience. Well, and we know what it takes to be successful. I was at a Keller Williams event at, at Keller Williams headquarters on Wednesday in Austin. And uh, Gary Keller came in for an hour and was interviewed. And he um, basically said he's made peace. He said, I'm a habit based. I've made peace with the process to achieve things where most people fight it. So Kai, you just laid out what that process looks like. So so guys, if if when I, the interviews I've done with some of the, the most successful loan officers, and I've interviewed some loan officers they're actually having it up here. And I'm not here to say that if you're not having it up here, you know, you're not doing the right thing because there's a lot of great loan officers that are doing the right things and they're down 20, 30%. But, but here's what I do know. The loan officers that are killed in this market, they're fired up. I mean, like when you watch that interview I did with Kelly Zitlow, she's fired up. Like she knows that the way she delivers advice the strategies that she's bringing to realtors, they're awesome. And she's pumped. Uh, you know, some of the new loan officers that are winning, they're fired up. Like, and they're not faking it. And that's that's the thing I would just say to anyone listening to this. Um, you know, this fake it till you make it. I don't necessarily think that's what time it is in the market. I think it's like, <laughs> do it. Like if you're, you've got a good call list, you're coming tomorrow and you've got a full day of making phone calls, having super on point conversations, 
That is what's going to give you energy. So one last thought for me, and then Todd, wrap a bow around this between you and Kai. Guys, Kai McBride is the real deal. And, and just having a conversation with him is pure value. So the fact that he said, hey, I'm going to be, you know, I'll do a free coaching session just to check you out, guys. That's that's worth thousands of dollars. And, and just those little conversations to get to know Kai a little better, um, super valuable. So if you're on the fence about, you know, getting a coach, um, whether Kai can help you, uh, schedule a call. You know, we put a link in here. If you're watching us on our YouTube, there'll be a link to sign up for Kai's coaching. I really believe that he is, he is one of the, the best coaches in this market. He, he truly gets the long game. Make your database your number one priority and you have a sustainable flow of business. And he's always watching like, what are the best strategies in today's market? What are the best social media strategies? He's a very modern coach. So check it out. Kai, thank you for making the decision to miss the opening of AIM, uh, which I'm sure is spectacular. So, I mean, it was a real miss, uh, but hopefully um, you had fun and you get a lot of value from the time you spent with us today. Yeah, uh, thank you for having me here. And and uh, I'll say one more piece of urgency. I think we have a really, really small window to create separation because once rate drops, that won't matter as much because people will create separation with, with what, what rates you have. So um, I always love being on here at, you know, good times, bad times. It's just, it's been a long time. I'm glad that you think that I'm always a special guest. I'll always take that, I'll always take that title. It's a lot of fun. I love working with the team. And, uh, you know, Deborah missed out, whatever. We'll text her. She'll watch the recording. <laughs> she missed a little alley-oop at the beginning. I like, threw yeah. up, I'm dunking. Oh, I was doing something else. So we won't throw it under the bus. But <laughs> I hope you got value, everybody. If you did, give this a like on whatever media you're watching this, YouTube, Facebook. If you have not already subscribed to the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel, do it now. Uh, we've got great interviews like this multiple times a week. And uh, Kevin Bride. You are the man, brother. All right, guys. Take care, Todd. Bye. A lot Bye, of fun everybody. as always. Nice job, guys.